Hello and welcome back to Mark's Garden UK and as you can probably see I'm not in my garden at the moment in fact I'm not even in the UK because I'm in Singapore and I'm stood outside the Botanical Gardens in Singapore I've been here before I know it's an amazing garden and most of it is a free space that you can visit anytime at your leisure and I can't wait to show you around let's go inside and when you first enter the garden you start to see signs like this which make the experience even more exciting. Let's go and have a look at the map, which is over there, so I can give you an idea of the scale of this garden. And as you can see from this map, it is quite an enormous garden, and it's right in the center of Singapore. And you can see we are down here, right at the entrance to the garden, and there's all this to explore. And I reckon you could probably spend at least two or three days doing all this, but I haven't got two or three days and I want to cram it all into a 15 minute video. So I'll just be giving you the edited highlights as I tour around this garden. Now I mentioned that most of this is free of charge. There is one part of this garden, which is the orchid garden, which you have to pay to get in. And I've done that before, so I've done a recce, and I think it's great value. If you pay for the orchid garden, and you include all this in the price, it's exceptional value for money. So there's the garden. Let's go and have a look around, and I'll just be giving you some edited highlights. Look out for wildlife. I can't guarantee we'll see any, but we might just. Let's go inside. You must stick to the paths in this garden, not only to preserve the tree roots, but also to avoid the snakes. And here, there's a little snake which has just come out. It has not poisoned. And here we have one of the native snakes, which is looking around for insects, I believe. Absolutely incredible. Imagine if that was on your doorstep when you woke up in the morning. Now, a team of people have obviously spent a great deal of time and energy curating a museum on the history and heritage of the Botanical Garden. So, if it were me and I were coming again, I would spend 20 minutes in here before I ventured inside the garden. I'll just give you a quick look around before we go on to the garden. Free admission, of course. In here they tell you all about the history of the garden and how it was constructed and whom by and you get to find out a lot of information which would surprise you and a lot of the work here was done by actually um, convicts this was a penal colony and then um, coolies and uh, it tells you all about that in this exhibition and it's worthwhile knowing all this information because it gives you the context as you walk around the garden. I would say having visited it, they're already well on the way to doing this. It's an incredible garden. Plenty of clear signage here. Now I've walked from my hotel, but you could come here on the MRT, which is their underground railway system. And it's so clean and well organized and safe. I would recommend it to anyone. Now there's two, MRT stations that service this. There's this one here, and there's also one at Tangling Gate. So take your pick, and if you come on that one, you'll end up at the other end of the garden. Let's continue on our journey. This is the Swan Lake, perfectly manicured, but at the same time, full of wildlife. Here, casually walking along the path beside me, is a small lizard. I think it's a monitor lizard and I know there are larger specimens but here's a little one just for now and there is that sculpture of swans on the lake quite a different type of wildlife in this garden and it lives side by side with humans and I did see a video on television once of otters living in the city in Singapore and apparently there are otters in this great lake uh, so much so that they actually give you advice on what to do if you see an otter but basically the advice is keep away and we've also been visited by some turtles or terrapins i suspect and a very tame pigeon 
not entirely sure what sort of animal this is let's see what it does when it reaches this grid an automatic lawnmower isn't that amazing the appliance of science and around it goes it has quite a job to do and here is a close-up view of one of our two swans amongst a swan or goose sculpture the other one is gently drifting around the lake in the distance this is one of the little native birds here which pollinates some of the plants and these plants in some of their native environments are pollinated by hummingbirds this is not a hummingbird i believe it might be what they call a sunbird but there it goes gathering nectar and at the same time pollinating these beautiful plants it says down here it's a canna lily yay something we've got at home canna's wonderful now we're still very much at the start of this garden tour at the botanical gardens in singapore i don't want to give you the impression that it's all perfectly manicured like this I mean, some parts of this do remind me of those golf courses you see on television when you're watching the open. But it isn't all like that. There are some wild areas and we'll go and see those in a moment. Uh, but a lot of it is very well maintained like this. And for the main part, a lot of the garden does have these wide paths. So if you were on a motorised scooter or in a wheelchair, you could probably make a good hash of getting around all of this space. And here, in a shady, damp area of the garden, you're reminded just how much it rains here everywhere. There are these gullies which are designed to gather up the water and guide it down to the various lakes on the plot. I was just standing here reading this informative sign about nutmeg when I heard a rustling at my feet. Now, I don't know whether I should touch it, but just to give you an idea of how big it is, that was my hand next to it. I might have alarmed it slightly then, which I apologise for, lizard. I think it's a monitor lizard, and they can clearly can move quite quickly if they want to. No harm done, as he wanders off nonchalantly into the undergrowth to look for some more bugs. I don't know if you can see his tongue. They do look like those Komodo dragons in miniature. And that's why I'm not keen to get bitten by one. <laughs> and just here, next to the drop-off and taxi rank and car park, Here's a garden dedicated to gingers. Let's go and have a look inside. Look at that tree. Wow. And of course, this is a true botanical garden. And therefore, one of its objectives is to educate. So all around the place, you get wonderful information. And you can stop and read it. And you'll learn something every time. Let's go and have a look at some of these spectacular gingers that's not a ginger that's a banana i wish ours were that big
some colocasia here not unlike our pink china but I don't think they are pink china because pink china have pinker stems but look at them here I bet they don't have to dig their colocasias up in the winter time some type of tree fern over there obviously not Dicksonia I think we'll see some Dicksonia later in the cool house and here towering above me an enormous palm of some description which starts off with these beautiful red stalks which eventually turn into kind of bamboo like trunks and here's the name most of the plants here are labeled quite conveniently so you can see them look at that isn't it stunning very prehistoric in this area of the garden i feel like i'm in jurassic park look at the size of that leaf amazing wow amazing that this is in a city right next to a road which is just on the other side of that hedge and you can probably hear it but here we're in a jungle rainforest and all around us i can hear the sound of what i think are little beetles in the trees it's like a constant ringing bell can you hear it in the background i'm just going to remove the microphone for a moment to see if you can hear the bugs or beetles or crickets virtually at the center of the garden is the national orchid garden and you do have to pay a little bit of extra to go inside here and if i've still got battery power i will go inside and do a separate video on it slightly later in the day i have been in there i can tell you in my opinion that it is worth the money and when you go in there and you look in the cold house and the mist house you understand that it probably costs quite a lot to maintain so a little bit of a contribution is probably necessary there's a beautiful and well manicured lawn here and the reason it's beautiful and well manicured and in this kind of hollow bowl shape is because it leads down to an arena on a lake imagine coming down here on a summer's evening and watching some classical music or listening to some classical music what a wonderful thought and on a future visit i hope to do that can you imagine andreas Bocelli filling this space with his wonderful voice am i getting carried away talking here just take it all in isn't it wonderful i think it's safe to assume that you don't need to have to worry about people invading the stage if you're performing on this platform look at this lake some enormous water lilies and there's the view up the lawn but imagine if you were here and you managed to perch yourself on that grassy slope there imagine the view you get of that stage and here it is Heliconia walk and we're joined once again by one of our little lizardy friends look down here the first time i saw one of these i was quite amazed <laughs> but the ten a penny i've seen dozens of them now you get quite nonchalant to the fact that they're here look at him digging away there his little tongue coming out scenting the ground looking for bugs and insects anyway let's get back to the heliconias which are up here look at these little heliconias they're like little crab claws hanging in the trees Isn't that wonderful and at the end of heliconia walk there is a chopin sculpture chopin at his piano composing right opposite the symphony stage some wonderful musical references here and look at the crowds there around the stage and a little later on if i do get there in time in the orchid garden which you do have to pay to go into there is a vip and celebrity collection of orchids in there which are orchids which have been named after celebrities and famous people politicians and superstars and the like and there is one in there named after andreas bocelli so it 
could probably assume that it's performed on this very stage. And now entering a part of the garden, which is for bougainvilleas and bamboos, and there's a collection of bamboos, of course, it wouldn't feel right coming to this part of the world and not seeing bamboos, but whenever I see a bamboo of this size, I'm reminded of seeing those pictures where they use these to make scaffold, to make skyscrapers. The bamboo trunk is such a strong structure, um, circular with those things that go across periodically, that they actually make bamboo scaffold and they can use that scaffold or well, they have done in the past to you to make uh, skyscrapers isn't that an amazing thought and you can see why because just look how tall that is there's actually a human being walking along that path there and you'll see as that person emerges as i pan up just how tall those bamboos are this is a little bridge across the corner of the eco lake and i've just spotted that one of those terrapins has come out to bask there he is down there can you see him now i can remember when i was a child I used to be able to buy these in the local pet shop they were about the size of a 50 pence piece that one there is around about i would say 10 inches long and when you bought those as a child in your in your bedroom and you had them in a little fish tank and they were about that big i remember stories of people releasing these into the wild and you can still see them in some ponds in the warmer areas of the uk but here there's dozens of them in this lake and they probably live all year round outside in this lovely warm climate just bumped into this very interesting chap on this fascinating device it's a video laser scanner and what he's doing is he's scanning all the trees in the garden and do this every six months to get the size and the shape and i guess they probably check on the health of the trees and take remedial action if necessary look at that what an incredible bit of kit sorry what's your name again cool one cool one yeah. nice to meet you and thank you for letting me video you that's incredible Let's go and have a wander around the foliage garden. What I like about this place is they've used kind of a steel mesh as a path and the plants can grow underneath it. And I suppose that kind of simulates a, a damp, shady zone down there underneath the path. On either side of the path, of course, you've got these amazing species. Please your eyes on that flower, quite wonderful. I've just heard somebody remark that this place around us looks so natural that it could always have been here, but of course there is a certain amount of artifice. It's man-made, but the environment that these plants live in is true, but you don't normally get these in the wild. <laughs> but it's nice to know that you're being looked after. A wonderfully secure and safe place is Singapore, because as I said earlier, they have their rules and they stick to them. And here we have an arid garden. And I wonder how difficult it is to keep an arid garden in such a wet and humid climate. Very well drained, obviously. And this one has its own rain canopy to keep it dry. But they're obviously doing a great job here because all these plants are thriving from agave to hello to cactus wonderful quite a different and unusual thing to see in this very humid country and you can walk through the center of this space in this kind of glass tunnel and if you're tall enough you can peep over the top The thought of the whole family here, there's even a little children's garden. I'm not going to go in, but I get the feeling that it's basically a large garden on a small scale. And it's great really to introduce the younger members of the family to the whole concept of gardening and being environmentally friendly. So there it is, 
Jacob Ballas Children's Garden underneath that bridge and it has the feel of entering a kind of a Jurassic Park. I shall go and explore the rest of the garden and leave that to my imagination. Everywhere you're reminded of the work that goes into this garden and maintaining it. And this is interesting, look at this here. It seems that they've caged off some of the fruits of this tree. I'm not sure why, but I could hypothesize that it's because they want to collect some seeds and they're protecting the fruits in order to collect the seed in this basket so that they can potentially propagate it. Perhaps it's a rare tree, I don't know. Um, I'll endeavour to find out if I can. The healing garden, and this is another area of gardening which interests me, as well as foraging. So we'll just have a little wander in, and as you probably gathered, it's all about plants which are used naturally to heal various medical conditions and ailments. I won't show you all the garden. I think you could probably spend an afternoon in this part of the garden alone. I'll just give you a flavour of what's involved. Now this is definitely an idea I'd like to copy at home. Imagine in this Singapore heat being sat underneath one of these canopies in the centre there on a bench in a downpour and there would be a wall of water running down off this roof and surrounding you all the way around the outside. Now I don't wish it was raining because I'm quite enjoying the dry weather but if it was raining that's where I'd be sat there enjoying the rain. Look at this lovely sculpture here, water feature. Now you could copy this at home and we could put this in our cities in the UK but unfortunately, sad though I am to say it, I feel if this was in some of our cities in the UK, by now it would be covered in graffiti. And that's not something they suffer from here in Singapore. Now I know there's an argument against strict rules uh, people don't have the civil liberties and the freedoms, but there's got to be a happy medium somewhere in between. And at the moment, I'm leaning in the direction of Singapore. I really do think they've got it right. I've been walking around this city now for nearly a week. I've not seen one piece of litter. People here take such a pride in their environment. And also, they adhere to the rules which are quite strict and the penalties are quite severe. Perhaps that's what we need a little bit more of. Anyway, I'll get down off my soapbox and continue to enjoy this garden. Again, because it's a botanical garden, they're always doing research. This lady is micro-propagating orchids. Fascinating. And you get to see this through a glass screen. They really are taking gardening to the next level. Just look at this. Absolutely incredible. Amazing leaves. Look at the size of these plants. Absolutely incredible. The Meng Kulang is one of the heritage trees in the garden and it's noteworthy because it has these highly fluted roots. Can you see them? And those are an adaptation that have evolved through nature to help it resist strong winds. And it would need to resist strong winds because it's an enormous, huge, tall tree. But those roots there have evolved to give it structural strength. Isn't that amazing? The things that nature will come up with and adapt to. Highly fluted roots. Yet another idea to try and copy at home. A series of narrow, shallow rills full of miniature water lilies. And look at the work they're putting in to that retaining wall there. These brick steps here were constructed by prisoners of war, 1942 to 1945. And they actually kind of put a mark on some of them as a kind of act of rebellion. There's a little arrow there, I don't know if you can see it. 
and this path leads down to a lovely sunken garden which we'll visit in a moment. This plant house was originally constructed in 1882. It's no longer a plant house per se, it's a series of giant steel pergolas again casting wonderful shade and you can walk all around the edge of it look at that amazing and it encircles this rectangular lawn which has a beautiful rectangular pool in it and i'm going to show you some water lily leaves in a moment just look at these now let me tell you that they are a meter in diameter look at that water lily flower there that's about to open amazing Well, I'm afraid that concludes this whistle-stop tour of the botanical gardens in Singapore. There is so much more to this garden than I've been able to include in this short video. So if you do get a chance to get to Singapore, please do visit this garden. It's free of charge. I've not got enough battery power to go and visit the orchid garden today, but if I can charge up tonight and come back tomorrow, I will do. And I'll put a link to that video just up here. Uh, if not, then I'll have to do it next time I come. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you back home in the UK very soon for some more gardening adventures. Bye for now from Singapore.